Good morning and Hoi Mora and Hoi Middag and hello on this Ascension Day. I'm Angus Kelly, the minister at the Methodist Church in Tableview, and this is Dumini Johannes. Yeah. Where are you from? Good morning, yeah. Hoi Mora. I'm from the Dutch Reformed Church here in Tableview. Having a nice coffee here with Gus in Gus's house. Yeah, it's good to see you. And uh, this morning I was thinking that that we miss our united um, Ascension Day services. So I quickly WhatsApped Johannes to see if he was available for a Himmel Farts discussion. Yeah. And so on this Ascension Day, we read from Acts chapter 1 from verse 6 to 12. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And may the words of our, our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Johannes, you've been reading an interesting book about where Jesus is. Have you found him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, the, that's the question. Uh, um, Usually we think because Jesus ascended to heaven um, that he's gone now, but um, this book by Dr. Kuniberger precisely says that um, he's not gone, he's still with us and he's still traveling through this world with us and by our side. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, that's the thing about the clouds as well. The clouds is a symbol of his presence if you look at the Old Testament. Mm. So he's not gone, he's still present with us. Yeah. So like Moses goes up to receive the commandments. Yes, 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 with the cloud and everything. An interesting um, thing that Moses Moses went up to receive the commandments and came down 40 days later. Yeah. And so now we're doing the 40 days later things, yeah. Pentecost and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so where is Jesus now? Yeah, so... Uh, what is he doing? According to the Nicene Creed, um, he sits at the right hand side of God after the ascension okay. um, but he's doing something while he's sitting there yes yeah. he's, uh, um, there's a few things I, I read that he's still busy doing for us while being on the father's right hand side I think the first one important one is that he's there preparing a place for us mm. in, in John 14 verse 2 we, we read about that so I think it's, it's a bit um, if you can uh, use an analogy it's like a boat going on a boat trip and, um, but, but you know you're going to arrive safely at your destination, even though there will be storms and stuff on the way mm. there. Mm. But you, you already know the destination yeah. and, and that you will be safe there. So he's, he's preparing that place for us wow. while, while sitting with his father. I read a while ago a, a, a description of, of a custom, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's totally true, but I love the story that uh, the groom would go and propose to the bride and then he'd go back to his house and his father would say well i'm going to get a new daughter so you'll have to add on uh, some more room to the house and the groom would eventually once he had got everything ready say to the father is it ready yet and then the father would say okay it's good enough you can go fetch your bride now yeah now quite like that idea of jesus uh, preparing preparing a place for us yeah. this beautiful place for us but but he's not just preparing a place. It, it, our place are, is already reserved for us with mm. with God, and um, we read about that in John ten verse twenty eight, where um, me meaning that uh, um, we we are kept in His hands. We keep we kept safe and secure in His hands, um, and um, yeah, it's just such a comfort to know that mm. um, while we're in this struggling through this world of ours. Uh, that in John chapter 10 is all that language about the good shepherd and Jesus being yeah. the, the, the rightful shepherd and the one who yes. will really lay down his life for the sheep and keep them safe. And yeah. 
and, and guide them. So yeah. those imagery, images are very helpful. Yes, but yeah. Yeah, and then the, the third thing is that um, after the ascension, Jesus is, is, is like standing in the gap for us. Mm. He's, he's our advocate. He's, um, he's, he's, uh, in, in Romans 8 verse 24, we, we read that he's, he pleads for us yeah. in, in a way. Um, which is also a very comf- a great comfort mm. to us, I think. And I like that I- idea that Jesus is paying attention to, to yes, our lives. Paying attention, yeah, that's a good one. And I think, um, I think sometimes when you read that Jesus pleads for us, we think that maybe the Father is really grumpy with us, yeah. and Jesus is putting in a good word for us. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's how it's um, meant to be understood, because no, we yeah. understand that it was God's love that sent Jesus. Yes. Um, and so the Trinity is not having an argument about about whether humans deserve God's help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but but there isn't something that we need to understand in terms of how God's thinking of us and paying attention to us yeah. is this image of, of God having a discussion. <laughs> yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, like in a family. Yeah, yeah. And as we talk, I've got guinea pigs here, and I've got dogs outside, and cars come past my my house. <laughs> so there are some strange noises. Uh, I apologize for that. Yes. Yes. So we are. Yeah, we? and then the I think the fourth fourth point is that um, Jesus is also praying for us. Um, we read in Luke twenty two verse thirty two about that. Hmm. Uh, uh, pray. F- he prays for us to to give us courage in our faith and. Um, to give us strength um, um, in this, you know, to, to cope with all the struggles and the, and the stuff of this world. Um, mm. and the, yeah, it's just so good to know that. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, so if I think if we can um, maybe you know like sum it up, I think we can think like of Jesus as, as, a, as a mentor or a guide, mm. traveling with us through this world. He's not gone after the ascension is actually in a new way in new ways he's with us yeah yeah um, and especially now as we look forward to pentecost and yes. reminded of the holy spirit who will come and that mysterious way in which we are um in relationship with the trinity and you've got a yes. beautiful quote from uh, a yeah. scottish scottish uh, yeah. scottish theologian and I, I would ask johannes to do the accent but <laughs> It's fine. He doesn't have to. Uh, <laughs> Afrikaans accent is, is um, it's close. Enough. It's very close. No. <laughs> yeah, it's from a Scottish theologian, J. B. Torrance, and um, um, uh, it's a beautiful quote that actually sums up everything that we just said. He wrote, um, "Jesus comes as our, as our brother to be our high, great high priest to carry on his loving heart the joys, the sorrows, the prayers, the conflicts of all his creatures." to reconcile all things to God and to intercede for all nations as our eternal mediator and advocate. He comes to stand in for us in the presence of the Father, when in our failures and bewilderment we do not know how to pray as we ought to, or forget to pray altogether. In worship, Christ himself comes to live in our hearts through the Spirit and draws us into the very life of God. Mm. Amen. It's beautiful. There you see the Trinity at work. Again. Yeah. Well, mm. shall I close in a prayer? Yes. Loving God, thank you so much for the opportunity to have a discussion about what it means that you, Jesus, ascended to the right hand of the Father. And these mysteries are way too much for us to comprehend. But as we look at what you have done, help us to know what we need to know from what you have revealed to us that you, Jesus, are seated at the right hand of the Father, that you are in conversation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that your conversation is about us and about our needs. So help us to know what you are praying for, for each of us today. Help us to know what your heart is for our churches and for our futures as we go on as your people. And so be with us, we pray, and remind us again and again that you, Jesus, have not abandoned us, that you are with us and we are with you in a way much more deep than we could understand at the time at which you walked this earth before you ascended to the right hand of the Father.